Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stronghold. We're about to utilize our knowledge with pitch and do even more war crimes with me, the sprite. I like even more war crimes. <laughs> to be fair, you you were burning people alive like you were you the are. American, uh, like you were the American military. Get in the Hague. Also, ahem, <laughs> me, the sprite. Me, the no, you said me, the Hague. <laughs> me, the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and me, the part. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Mushin 17, Smoky Bacon. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen here. I very much hope that we're fighting the pig. I think no, you're going to cook the pig. Smoky Bacon is entirely against the wolf. <laughs> Not his grubby hands on our ah, knowledge. Ah, boiling pitch. They're teaching us how to use boiling oil. Your favourite bard. You can finally go on your boiling oil rant that you've been waiting for for so long. Oh, brilliant. I can talk about Greek fire. I can talk about boiling oil. I'm so excited. Wow, we still don't know what Greek fire was. No, we don't. We'll talk about that in a moment when we start the mission, though. So, use the resources you've gathered to build and defend the ancient monastery. Your army has left a clear path through the boggy grass... Boggy grassland, not buggy. Uh, so it will not be long before the pig finds you. Use pikemen! Mm. Got oh, so yes. much to talk about this episode, Bard. Pikemen to block the pig's troops and how engineers boil pitch. To maximise the effect, boil the boiling pitch on his troops from a height. I will do just that. So, we've got this little monastery here that we need to fortify and defend. So, my first goal is going to be stone, which is not... Ah, it's actually not, not too far away. Uh, but it's a bit up a hill, which is a bit annoying, but there we go. Bard? Yes, right. Have you... you, you you're reading through um, Game of Thrones, uh, the, the Song of Ice and Fire. You've read it. I've You've read, read it everything that's out. Se se several times. I know this because I was watching back through our um, yes. Lego Star Wars where he talked about this earlier. He's w read it all but refuses to watch it for you reasons which are understandable. Which are, for reasons which are understandable. Um... Have you had much with wildfire? Yeah, I know. I know well, what the historical like inspiration book, yeah. is. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to double check before I said something stupid. I, I appreciate your your caution, Sprite, so you don't spoil anything for me. But look what it is! It's a circular it's, tower. Oh, it's a circular tower. I've been waiting so long for a circular oh, tower. Oh, the tech tree has really come to it to, to a four in this episode. This is what you need for smoky bacon. Yeah. My favorite flavor of crisps. It took a remarkably long time for like circular towers to come to the UK or and to, to the, the United Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, look, much stronger, much better. Look at them; they're majestic. I love it. See, sphere is a sh is big in shape. <laughs> I'm, in shape I'm also I'm shape. also pretty certain we've discussed. We've I know for a fact we've discussed the spiral staircases before already. So I won't go into yeah, those. the way they spiral and how yeah. that can fuck over the. <laughs> it's all based on the fact that most soldiers were probably right-handed. Yeah, and if you were a mercenary, we've talked about this already, but if you were yeah. a mercenary cadre, you would like deliberately cultivate it, like a, a unit of left-handed swordsmen. As a fuck you, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Can I, can I rant about boiling oil yet? You absolutely can, while I, whilst I build an oil smelter. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, like, this game's actually fairly historical, as we keep talking about, and like, I, I love the intersection between economy and like logistics and actually fighting a war. Boiling oil is not a thing, apparently. Like I've, I've watched a bunch of videos about this. Basically, oil is so valuable that you would never actually heat a commodity that was so expensive and then dump it on the enemy. You would just use water. I have a question. Maybe what about fat? Yeah, animal fat. I think again, it was pretty valuable, and like you would I use. But there are better uses of rendered. Well, you use it then. for um, eating and stuff. And for se and for sealing things and preserving things, which was very difficult. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, here we have this lad with oil, and if we press that button and pour it that way, it would yeet oil off the building up. Oh! Jesus Christ, Doctor! <laughs> you, mean, you, you mean like that? <laughs> well, either way, he will now go back to our oil smelter and reload his oil, so that's fine. It's a fun mechanic. Yep. Not how oil not how oil works, though. I don't know. I've seen a chip fire or two in my days. I love I love the ballista. And will you hurry up and build some pikemen so I can talk about those? Oh, well, we'll get there. I need, I need a bit more metal at the moment. But yeah, we can make metal armor now. Can we make... We can... You make swords? Hmm. Presumably Ooh. not. The doctor's uh, frowning severely. Well, yeah, the game thinks we can make swords with that, but I don't... Th I think that's just because that is what that building produces, not because we are eligible to use that building to produce it. I'll talk about the notion of swordsmen in, in this when you get to them, but, like, I'm really excited you'll get to have pikemen, because there may be... I, I'm fascinated by pike formations. Like, <laughs> my, my partner's... You don't mean the fish? No, I... Oh, uh, are you uh, an idiot? Uh, uh, I'm just checking. Pike formations could have been a fish thing. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, I mean the medieval polearm. My partner is sick to death of me talking about Mac Macedonian pike formations. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case it was in doubt viewership. I love pikes. Pikes are great. <laughs> I'm more of a cod fan. 
You need to stop with the fish, but oh shit, that's the one. In any case, we should maybe talk about what they actually are. So, like, a, a pike is effectively viewership of anybody a long spear. In later medieval iterations of the weapon, they often had, like... Some bullshit on the end, yeah. Yeah, an, an axe head, which is maybe more like a halberd, and there's, like, various kind of subclasses of pike and halberd, which are technically different weapons, but to all intents and purposes, a pike is a really, really long spear with a polearm weapon on the end of it. And they're rad. So they're incredibly effective against cavalry because you can impale a horse and the man's sitting on the horse from a long distance away without being hurt. Mm -hmm. And that you can mass produce pikes much more easily than you can produce, as this game demonstrates. Swordsmen, for example, like heavily armored men on foot. Like you don't necessarily need as much training to use a pike as you do to wield a longbow. And you can heavily armor the guys who are wielding the pikes because you can keep both arms with a pole arm and have like a heavily armored breastplate without really losing much mobility. They, they're awesome. I love pikes. Also, fun fact: when the sprite plays Seven Days to Die, her favorite weapon is a spear. Handy because you can keep because you can keep fuckers away from you. Yeah. Yes. That, that's the main thing, isn't it? So, like, I think I, I don't know if we've talked about this in the channel so far, but like, some of, a lot of medieval combat boils down to the willingness of one person to kill another person, right? Mm -hmm. And like, could I, as a modern man, fire a rifle and kill somebody? half a mile away who if i didn't shoot him was going to like burn down my village carry off my loved ones to slavery and destroy my culture if i had to just pull a trigger and kill him from 800 meters away could i do that probably right if he was like 12 feet away from me on the end of a pike and i had to like plunge the pike into his body and kill him in order to protect my loved ones could i do that maybe if I was three feet away from him and I had to take a dagger or a sword and plunge it into his beating heart and feel the blood spray over me, could I bring myself to do that? I don't I think could, so. I could, and I quite enjoy it. So, speaking of watching people do horrible acts... War crime at a clock. War crime! No, wait, wrong button. Oh, my days. They wouldn't still be attacking the wall. No. No. But the AI in this game is <laughs> not quite so, smart so dead. That. They're so dedicated. <laughs> there's dedicated and then there's that. My god. Yeah, you can do some real war crimes in this game now. It's great. Doctor, the you first... shouldn't be happy about that. And yet. I love that your the pike when just come up and like just hit the wall with their pikes. <laughs> yeah, they they came with engineers, but I took out the engineers from a distance with the baluster. To prevent Very exactly sensible. this kind of Hey, stop that, you wankers! What are they oh, doing? Uh, breaking my fucking woodcutters. That's just rude. That is just rude, you're right. So the first iteration of pikemen in battle that I'm familiar with... No, 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 with... no, no you, you oh. fucking jeb end. Oh. you got to start all over again, Doctor. Uh, not all over again, but it is annoying. You built See, that, when that bell inside my fucking area. This is a much more aesthetically pleasing keep that you've built yourself. That's because it's already basically here. It's just, this is a reinforced monastery that already existed, so all I've done is is reinforce it a little. The is empty, oh shit, the gra oh, oh no! Oh, we are having... Did I, they eat all your food? No, they destroyed all my food, which is slightly different. Or I never produced it in the first place. It's unclear. Um, but You're it, right. Feeding either your way, people doesn't it's cause... bad. Um, right, let's build quickly. Where is it? Are you shitting me? Yes, you are shitting me. That's good. <laughs> oh, wank pot. What? I don't think. I don't. Oh, think, I don't nothing. think we've had a clear. We're in hate. We're in, we're in a hate loop now. He's running out of a certain resource. and needs the other resource to recoup it. Correct. Yeah. Whilst the Doctor rebuilds viewership, tell us how are you enjoying the series? Like, are you here for the historical commentary? Are you here just for our chat? Are you enjoying the game itself? Or are you mostly just here for the kind of history podcast? We're having a blast with this. I'm really enjoying it. But then again, I'm mostly just getting to talk about lots of things that I like, including pikemen. So. <laughs> or are you here for the one in 200 minutes that we get to talk about Terry Pratchett? Because that's what I'm here for. And yet. What, what, does Pratch <laughs> what does Pratchett think of a pikeman sprite? I honestly don't know. I suppose like, I don't know. If, if anyone would know if he has an opinion about it, I would bank on it being you. Yeah. Potentially, but it's not something that I've come across. I can tell you what he thinks about the internet and... Oh my god, um, we're restarting, Doctor. Yeah, I uh, bad decisions were made and we were locked into them, basically, uh, is the easiest way to summarise what happened there. Uh, continue, though. Um, 
yeah, he talks about the semaphore is basically the dawning of um, the clacks, the clacks towers. Um, you know, this uh, this instant communication and the, those things and how they're both good and bad and what are the good and bad elements of it. Uh, and basically, he's just he's not very capitalist. <laughs> no, which he, I, I'm here for. Teddy hates capitalism. I wouldn't say hates, but he has the same issues with it that I do, which is early stage capitalism that's more socialism is okay but we certainly don't live in a capitalist society and that's not the the path to everyone actually being well looked after and healthy and well i concur Um, i'll never forget some uh, guys came into my bar and they were um hedge fund uh, traders oh goody no, they're not what you'd think. They're definitely not that type and they're doing it with personal money to be like, I understand how this works and I'm going to make the rich wankers pay. And they were absolutely astounded that I understood how it all works. And I didn't have the heart to tell them that I understand it because Terry Pratchett wrote about it with me <laughs> guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Robin so, Hood's capitalists, wow. Yeah. I mean, good for them, I suppose. Well, it was they were interesting people. They had interesting opinions and stories, and they, uh, yeah, they were, they were very interesting to speak to. Is it the preferred strategy here, Doctor, to build fortifications first and then guys to man those fortifications later? Yes, uh, but but the crucial thing to, to to focus on, which I didn't do last time, is also build a reasonable food. economy. That basically just my food economy was kind of fucked, and the crucial thing, which I didn't build was a marketplace. So I I died surrounded by gold last time <laughs> uh, with nothing to do with any of it. Whereas like gold, worst case scenario, you can start buying and selling stuff. You can stave off problems with food and starvation by buying in food, for example. Um, but you can't if you haven't got enough wood to make a um, thing and to make it to make a marketplace in which you would actually make that deal. So, I see oh, it. Right, let's make some fucking pikemen then. Um, oh yes, can I talk about pikemen, Doctor? <laughs> you can. Give me just a second. Oh, well, I haven't got room in here to actually build a fucking barracks. Is the only problem. Well, we'll have to build barracks outside and hope for the best. That might not be a bad thing because then you'll have a bunch pikemen! of pikemen. Yes, pikemen. And I like pikemen, the fact that pikemen. pikemen are also northern. Let's have a listen. Aye, sir. Pikemen forward. They're very yeah. yeah. steady, like Yorkshire. Really bad Sean Bean yeah. accent. That's a, a lot, lot of the accents in this game are not have. great, but they're fun. That's a lot of pikemen you got all, all at once. Yeah, it's because we did this. This level comes with ten pikes and ten metal armor. So, oh, I'd be an idiot not to. Do you want to know the first? Well, the first usage of pikemen that I'm aware of in the Western world, Doctor. Go on. So, you ever heard of a chap called Philip of Macedon? Yes, <laughs> I have. But for the viewer, <laughs> <laughs> father of Alexander the Great, he effectively inherits like a crumbling kingdom. And the way that he rebuilds it is to like massively organize, reorganize the military, and the core of that military is pike phalanxes. So, trained professional soldiers who form a standing army, they drill constantly, they train all year round, because the pike is actually a very skilled weapon. It's actually quite difficult to march in formation and also carry a twenty-four foot pike and use it effectively and fall. I know that was the whole thing with like the the the, the lander's neck it was literally just like training to move in basically a square of ten by ten men and not fucking shiv each other in the back with your pikes by accident yep. is is a real scale. Oh, absolutely. We, we talked earlier on about the, the Anglo-Saxon system where, like, half of the men would work the land and during times of war, the other half would go and fight for six weeks and they would rotate round so that the land yeah. was always being worked. But, like, those guys aren't going to be very professional soldiers because they only fight for six weeks at a time. Whereas, like, Lands Connect, the later Swiss, it- Swiss iteration of pikemen and the Macedonian pike phalanxes would drill continuously all year round. Because it's very difficult to do these things. It's like one of the first times in history that you saw a professional class of soldier with a weapon system that was just leagues in front of what anyone else was using. Yeah. And that's it's basically that's... that scene from 300. Soldier, sort... what's your um, uh, profession? What, what's your profession? Yeah. Yeah, having a professional standing army is just a massive deal historically. It's just prohibitively expensive for lots of cultures because it turns out it's really expensive to equip and maintain and pay someone's wages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's why yeah, I, that's, I like that. Like, even, they, they not, there weren't many, like, you have to get well past the ancient era before, you, as you say, you start getting a meaningful, like, professional army. Yeah. I mean, like, 
Roman legions after the Marian reforms. So there's a, a Roman general called Marius who there's some debate I've heard about of him. Well, yeah, have you heard about him or heard about the characters from Les Mis? I mean, Sorry, he's, one, is, <laughs> one, one is named after the other, and like the, the, the lame is Marius looks a lot like you, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, that's always the that's always the the comparison to myself physically that I don't mind. Much like with with you, with uh, you and the Irish fella, um, Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy. Yeah, the 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 physical comparison which I will absolutely take is um, Eddie Redmayne for me. It's very flattering. Yeah, I'll certainly. Oh, fuck off. Oh. By the wrong bloody way, and it went into the building by accident. <laughs> you right, set your own thing that can happen. You set your own tower on fire. There we go. Oh no, you still missed them. Christ on a bicycle. All right, let's do that. There we go. That'll That's do war it. Crimes. Yeah. In any case, like Marius is the guy who gets the credit historically for professionalizing the Roman military. That like he paid legionnaires. He equipped them all the same way. He standardized like the tactics across all the legions. It's debatable whether he is actually responsible or whether he's just the guy who happened to write this stuff down. Yeah. My my favorite fact about Marius, the historical figure, is that there was a German, or at least what passed for German back in like <laughs> the first century BC. There was a massive German invasion of Italy, and Marius's troops repelled them, and he killed apparently so many German tribesmen that they created a god of death in his likeness. <laughs> and, and that's when you know you're doing that well. is life goals. Yeah, right when, there. when the Germanic tribes build a god of death in your honor, you've you've you've, you've made it. That's you it. Have made it yeah. How fucking awesome is that? <laughs> like, I mean, horrible because a lot of people died, but like, that's just cool. <laughs> Anyway, no, he, you're he, right, Bard. That is actually really cool. Uh, so he, historically, Marius, is the guy who gets the credit for like turning the Roman legions into the unstoppable fighting force that we typically think yeah. of when you think of the Roman military. Again, by having I a professional of a bunch of class of soldiers, and philosophers that made okay. the that made the the legions invincible. Yeah, I mean, you can think of lots of things when you think of Roman culture or ancient Rome, but like. The, the notion of Roman military invincibility is brought about in a large part by the Marian reforms. Marius gets pre gets credit for them, and they are basically creating a professional class of soldier that is always employed by the army, and therefore can drill all year round. Is never not. Yeah, I think the arms. constant drilling is super important. Yeah, which is why the the Lands Connect, the the medieval version of the pikemen in Switzerland, why they were so effective. Yeah. Sometimes I wish we showed the viewers our faces, just because when you said constant. Drilling can be good. I waggled my eyebrows and no one could see it. Why do you feel the need to do this way? <laughs> Why are you the way that you are? It's another, it amuses me. It's another point to note between the link between rugged mountain people and making very, very exceptional soldiers. See, Go see, on. See the Macedonians. See, like, the Swiss. See, the Scots. Like, if you live in a bit of the world where economic prospects are low, food is <laughs> scarce, and you have to leave your homeland to seek your fortune... You typically make quite good, hardy, tough soldiers. Counterpoint, the Red Army. To be fair, that's not so much them being hardy soldiers as like, how many men do we need to lose to take this position? <laughs> fair, five, five, yes, it's a difference in, in military <laughs> philosophy, I suppose, yes. Yeah. And warfare is pretty grim, not just in the killing people covered in blood. You're camped in these horrible situations. You need to sleep well in shit situations. You need to function well on that lack of sleep and you need to function well on shit dry nasty food like there's yeah. a lot involved with warfare that's really unpleasant and not everyone's good at like sucking up and dealing with things that's not to say anyone's better than anyone else that is not a better than anyone else comment it's just people are different and yeah. it's worth noting that 100 percent. It's, it's often overlooked because like it's not really borne out in fantasy movies or like medieval war movies or anything like that it's like if you've ever gone for a big hike like as an adult if you walk 10 15 miles a day you're knackered at the end of it imagine yeah. doing that doing that carrying like a heavy pike and then having to fight a bunch of people that's, that's really difficult to do yeah there's a line in lord of the rings always makes me think of that when uh, theoden's like it's a three-day ride to the uh, to the battle and man and beast must arrive with the strength to fight it's like can you imagine yeah riding what they functionally do is ride day and night for three days and then fight what is not an easy fight at the end it's like yeah Come to think of it, that is fucking insane. Can you repair that tower? Uh, when I get some stone in, which should be soon. But unfortunately, we've got two oxen. We're loading them evenly, so they'll both arrive at the same time, which is slightly after the pigs' lads get here. Uh, I'm hoping to basically potentially build up enough money to buy the stone to do so, which might be a little 
better of an approach. We've got a bit of pitch, but I'm just actually going to sell that pitch for cash. That's a better use of the way this works. Nope, you've more stone than that to actually do it, so I'm going to build the crenellations around it. Oh. I would just, I would just to see if the game bears this out, but like something that Pike Ministorica are really great at is they are super effective against cavalry. And again, like Helm's Deep's a wonderful example of this. You know, when Eomer leads his big charge down against the besieging Uruks at Helm's <laughs> Which Deep, doesn't work. Yes, or yeah. shouldn't work. <laughs> it's like Literally. you know, like two two thousand cavalry slam into a wall of pikes, and the pikes lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a thing no. that never happens. Yes. Yeah, because even like again, my partner's a vet. She's got some strong opinions about the intelligence of horses and she's like not even horses are stupid enough to run into a wall of spiky things they just don't yes. do that yeah see also see one of my favorite things which is there's a pretty cool set of images which is all like over time how like a soldier's field kit has developed and one of the ones you see for like um around the time when like heavy cavalry were a big thing is you see like soldiers would just carry one stake and if you had a hundred guys they could quickly with those stakes make a wall that no sensible horse would charge just by sticking wooden stakes into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. These were sharpened on both ends, so you stick them in and you've got a spike pointing towards you. Just your so end. we're clear, yeah. this is all completely true, but also some people would train their horses to jump and run even when they couldn't you see. You can only do so much, though. Yeah. yeah, you have to cover the horse's eyes and you have to have done that. Yeah, that's an, and, and then you've also got to be in combat but, with a completely blinkered horse, which is. Which is not good. Not, Absolutely. It's, but it's the a, point is, it's you a trade off, is what options. it is, yes. Yeah, and whether you could ever deploy those kinds of exceptional riders and horses in numbers that would make a, a difference on the battlefield yeah. is another thing. Yeah. It's one of the reasons that um, Viking activity or Viking raids intensify in England in the late 10th and 11th centuries is because, like, in Germany and in France, rulers like Charlemagne and, like, his oh, descendants... Shit had created like a class of heavy cavalry that could easily repulse Viking raids because the Vikings did not have cavalry and like they were almost defenseless against them. So like they went what to the? England. How did you miss that oh. fucking fanny? Good lord. This is a very cool weapon, but impractical somehow. Or another thousand it... miles from real life, as you're saying. There we, oh, there go. we go. There's the war crime. Can you accidentally burn your own towers down? Not meaningfully, no. But you'd be again. It's one of the slight frustrations with this game is how much damage you can meaningfully do with with foot troops to solid fortifications. Uh, as I say, Stronghold Crusader, the ga this game sequel. Is that your stone coming in? Yes, my stone has come in, um, and both of these do need repairing. But stone, it takes a while. Um, basically, it's, it's almost the cost of repairing it. Not quite, but almost. Um, but yeah, like Stronghold Crusader deals with this with solid walls mode that basically means nothing other than catapults and trebuchets and rams can meaningfully damage walls because it is a bit annoying that you know Maces. dudes with swords can chip away at it but other than that it does it alters in a negative way i think the kind of rock paper scissors of the game where it's just like well enough walls just become very powerful yeah which yes they should be to some extent but also yeah i i would assume that they have made walls vulnerable to small arms that, that's the case for balance reasons. I yes, assume. exactly. It's, it's to make sure that raw paper scissors works, which is sensible enough. 